our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Glory to God. And tonight we'll be starting chapter one. We are a bit behind the schedule, but I'm trusting God that we'll make up. We have some blank weeks on our calendar that we can fill in. Some of the classes as we progress, as the Lord will lead and guide us, will probably double up. But tonight we're in chapter one, a passion for what God wants, the precursor to prayer. I pray and trust that everybody has had an opportunity to read over the text, amen, and even to peruse your questions in your workbook and hopefully during tonight's course of study that we'll answer some of those for you as we proceed. Let us pray. Father, we come again in the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of your son, Jesus. And we just want to say thank you again. We take each and every opportunity uh, that we have to give you thanks, honor, and glory for what you're doing in and through our lives, Father God. The Bible teaches us to look not at the things that are seen, but at the things that are not seen. Father, and you, you said that the present suffering of this time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. I thank you, Father, for those that are in attendance here and those that are online. And folks, Father God, even those that are uh, contemplating joining Sonship School of the Firstborn, we give you glory and honor for allowing us to have a school in the church, Father God. And Father God, I thank you for the sacrifice that's been made, Father God, for those that are in attendance, Father God, that your word declare that we are to buy the truth and to sell it not, Father God. And Father, you told the disciples, even in the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, to go a little further, and they have chosen to go a little further. And I decree and declare, under the authority of God, that there be no lack in their families for the sacrifices they made, even in their finances, Father God, that you would restore it, even 30, 60, even 100 fold, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. And I ask you to cover their household and children, Father God, that no demonic activity, Father God, become up, Father God. We bind the enemy in the total sum of his wickedness. We loosen the power and the authority of the Holy Spirit to reign, rule, and be supreme in each and every household represented, Father God. And Father, we just thank you. We invoke the presence of the Holy Spirit, the great teacher of the church. We ask for revelation knowledge to flow Anoint our ears, our hearts, and our minds, Father God, to receive what thus saith the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. I feel like giving God a praise. Amen. And again, tonight we're studying um, a passion for what God wants. And I pray and trust again that everybody got a chance to read the text. This is going to be very helpful if you did. Amen. And hopefully we can bring some clarity. Uh, when we talk about a passion for what God wants, the word that best articulates that is, as it pertains to prayer, is the word supplication. Let the church say amen. 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 Supplication, and I want you to, to um, grasp this because you're gonna hear it throughout this particular teaching and throughout the Bible, you, you, you're gonna deal it and it's gonna give you, uh, I hope and pray a new perspective. Supplication is always dealing with what God wants. Say that with me. Supplication is always dealing with what God wants. Amen. The only prayer that God answers are his own. Now that's a novel statement to a lot of people. Lord God, there are some people that have been in church all their lives. If you were to go up to them and say supplication, yes, Lord God, they would uh, they would have a, a, a general understanding of it. But glory to God, God is calling us to go a little further. So we're going to develop a, a deeper meaning of, of what supplication is. And we understand supplication is always dealing with what God wants as it pertains to prayer. 
and the only prayer that God answers are his own. Amen. Mm -hmm. The first element of the apostolic order of prayer is supplication. The first element of the apostolic order of prayer is supplication. Supplication is the foundation to all biblical praying. Supplication is the foundation to all biblical prayers. Amen. Amen. If we don't lay the proper foundation when we pray, then we end up with what we call straight line praying. Straight line praying is a hit or miss proposition. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, when we hit it, it's because we pray in the will of God. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And other times we're going to miss it because it's not his will. Amen. Supplication deals with, and this is, is probably foreign to a lot of people, it deals with hearing before you speak. Amen. We have to know what the will of God is first before we can lay the proper foundation. How are we to know what to pray if we haven't heard God give us what to pray? So supplication deals with hearing before we speak. Amen. Few people, glory to God, begin their prayer, glory to God, with silence before they start praying. Amen. I know this is probably new to a lot of people, glory to God, but as we go, we're going to develop it through the scriptures, and I think you'll see exactly what the Lord is trying to get to us, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It's kind of like, let me use this as an example. When you have a, a, a baby that's first born, when he first begins to talk, generally, uh, the mother and the father and those that are close to that baby, even when he starts to speak goo goo and gaga, they kind of know what he means. Glory to God. But as that baby gets a little older, amen, you expect him to develop a language that's more understandable. If he's going to be effective in communicating with people other than his parents, he's going to have to develop, glory to God, uh, a, a more articulate way of speaking. Amen. Make sense to you? Amen. Glory to God. One of the things that's important for us as maturing Christians is that we have a place of prayer. Not only a place of prayer, but we also need a time of prayer. Many of us, when we um, wake up in the morning, glory to God, amen, we just begin to pray right then. Pray right where you uh, 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 get on your knees on the side of your bed, glory to God, and begin to pray right then. And that's okay, glory to God. But what, what God is calling us to now is a time of prayer. Amen. If, if you study the life of Jesus, Jesus had certain times set aside that he would pray. Glory to God. It's like you have an appointment to meet God. Amen. It's not just I'm going to meet him when I get up. But I set a time, glory to God, a time of prayer and a place of prayer where God knows I'm going to be there at this certain time, glory to God, and he meets me there. Or I know he's going to be there. The Bible calls it the secret place. Now watch this. We go to our secret place, but the scripture says in Psalm 91, watch this. The Bible said, he that dwelleth where? In the secret place of the most high. Amen. We go to his secret place. Mm -hmm. Amen. The Bible said, he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. Glory to God. We have to find God's secret place. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. 
there was a study done, a survey taken, and it says that the average, not Christian, but the average pastor prays about 15 minutes a day. Actual fervent prayer. The average pastor prays about 15 minutes a day. Glory to God. Amen. And, and what that depicts is because we take prayer um, well, as we go on, I, I'll be able to develop that and help you to understand why that the, the survey deems that the average pastor prays about 15 minutes a day. Uh, biblical prayer. Amen. We spend a lot of time doing what we call or what we think to be prayer, glory to God, but it's actually straight line praying. Okay. Glory to God. A prayerless Christian is dead neutered and useless in the kingdom of God. A prayerless Christian is dead, neutered, and useless in the kingdom of God. He's useless to the king. Amen? Oh God. That is a such thing that's called prayerlessness. And the Bible said that Prayerlessness is a sin. Mm -hmm. According to 1 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 23, the Bible said, uh, God forbid that I cease to pray. Amen. Let's go over that mm -hmm. before I butcher that. <laughs> Amen. 1 Samuel. Read it. First Samuel chapter 12, verse 23. You got to read loud because they need to hear you on that. Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you, but I will teach you the good and the right way. Amen. Glory to God. The Bible says, Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin. So when we, now listen to what this is saying. As, as pastors and as leaders and as ministers of the gospel, when we, the Bible say, what it say? Read it. Verse 23. Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord okay. and ceasing to pray for you. Okay, now listen to what the scripture says. You're in school. And you're going to learn. The Bible didn't say, and what it depicts here is not a person that doesn't pray, but a person that has stopped praying. My God. He uses the word that I cease to pray for you. Amen. I started out praying for you, but because it's straight line praying and I ain't getting no answer, I quit. Hallelujah. And the Bible said that when we enter into that area, glory to God, and that's what happens to most Christians. Uh, uh, they're not fervent in prayer because, glory to God, they've been praying straight line prayer and their prayers haven't been answered because the only prayer that God answers are his own. And if we're not praying the will of God, if we don't lay the proper foundation, supplication, and supplication is what? Praying what God wants. Mm -hmm. Supplication is praying what God wants. And we don't know what God wants if we don't listen to hear God tell us what he wants. It's going to get better. It's, it's, and we're going to develop that as we go on. Amen. That's why our biblical praying, glory to God, begins with the apostolic order of supplication. Amen. Apostolic order means just first things first. Okay. Apostles set things in order. First things first. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Can I go on? Yes, that, okay, so we understand that there's such thing as prayerless. Listen to what the word says. Prayer. Prayerlessness. Less praying. Mm -hmm. Don't mean you're not praying, but you're praying less than you used to pray. Wow. 
Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayerlessness. Okay. All right. Let's deal with this word uh, passion. Glory to God. Uh, I don't have a book, but chapter one. Let me see here. We're going to read. You got uh, read uh, chapter one. Uh, Ms. Justin. From your book? Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Okay. I got it right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What is passion? Acts 1 and 3 uses this word to describe the suffering. No, Jesus. sir. Stop. Read the scripture to me. Please. Yes, sir. Uh, James. James 5 and 13 through 18. Yes, sir. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. If any merry, let him sing songs. If any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. Underline like passions. We're dealing with the word passions. Okay, we dealt with supplication. Amen, but we're going to deal with passion now. We're not through with supplication, but we're going to interject passion into our conversation now. Chapter one is a passion for what God wants. The precursor to prayer. We understand what precursor means, right? It comes before. Now listen to the topic. A passion. Passion for what God wants. Passion for what? What God wants. What is what God wants? What's the word for that? Supplication. There it is. Now you're seeing it. Now you're developing it. If you track with it and track with me, glory to God, it's going to get grafted into your spirit. I want you to see it. Amen. Glory to God. The Bible said faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. And faith comes by hearing. Glory to God. I'm going to be redundant with some things, but it's so it can be grafted into your spirit so you can get it. See, this has been before your eyes right there in the chapter, a passion for supplication. But if I didn't point it out, possibly you'd have missed it. But I want you to get it. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, verse 17. So, man. so, I have to develop a passion for what God wants. Mm -hmm. Before I start praying. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You get it? Glory to God. We're going to re, re uh, uh, vamp your prayer life in there. Let's go on. Go on, please, sir. Mm -hmm. 17. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Okay. Now, the essence of this particular scripture is here to teach us something. Okay? The essence of this scripture. The Bible says, in verse 17, Elias was a man subject to what? Like passion. Like passion. What is that? That's supplication. That's, a That's passion. passion. What, God wants. what God, he was a man subject to like passion. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we finna develop that. Now, okay, that word passion in this particular scripture, in the book of James, chapter 5, 13, that word passion is the Greek word Homo epathy. Is that in the handout? In the uh, definition? No, sir. Okay. No. Well, you better take note. Homo epathy. 
H O M O E P A T H Y. Homo epathy. It's a compound word, and homo means what? Same. 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 Where you get that from? Uh, in the book. Uh, it's in the book. Yeah. You might not have read it yet, but you'll get to it. Homo but anyway. Legale. Homo legale. Homo legale. There you go. The word, the root word, the root derivative of the word homo means the same. Okay. Epathy, glory to God, means feelings, emotions, and affections. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. But if we look up the uh, uh, etymology of that word epathy in the Hebrew, it's written here in the Greek. We uh, epathy uh, in the in the Hebrew is apathy or uh, apathy. Oh, okay. It diminishes the meaning of the word. Apathy or apathy, glory to God, which means the lack of feelings, no passion. Oh, come on, uh -huh. somebody. Amen. Glory to God. And that word apathy translated back to the Greek is pathos, which brings back the feeling, the emotions, mm -hmm. and the affections. And we have to develop the same homo, homo the same, the same. Mm -hmm. feeling, affection, and emotion as God has. Wow. Come on, somebody. All right, are you with me? Yes, sir. Amen. That's what that word means when it says right here now, Elijah was a man with the same feelings, affections, and emotions as we are. He had the same feeling and emotions as we are. Okay, now that's in that scripture. Now, now read on. Introduction. Okay, introduction. What is passion? Acts 1 and 3 uses this word to describe the suffering Jesus endured throughout his ordeal on the cross. Okay, oh. hold it right there. Now that word passion in the book of Acts is not the same word that's used in the book of James. This word passion is the Greek word pascha, P-A-S-C-H-A. -S now don't worry about it, and just get this down and I'm gonna make it make sense to you in a minute. Amen, pascha is where we get Passover from. Huh, are you with me? Amen. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. And you you remember the Passover, right? Mm -hmm. After the Passover, what happened? You can chime in online however you want to do it. Glory to God. Huh? It's when Jesus came and he washed the disciples' feet. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Washing of the disciples' feet was a representation of Jesus was trying to